welcome to uh, First Name Basis, uh, where we chat with uh, special guests, industry leaders, and tribal scale employees uh, in an effort to have some authentic and interesting conversations on a variety of technology and um, innovation topics. My name is Chris Krasinski. I'm the VP of Product and Product Design at Tribal Scale. I'm chatting today with Steve Smith, a president at AccuWeather. Steve, welcome to uh, First Name Basis. Chris, love, lovely to be here. Happy to be here. Um, excited to do this with you. Awesome. Uh, Steve, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, about your role, and uh, kind of at a high level, uh, what you um, what you do at AccuWeather? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So uh, title on the wall today says president of AccuWeather, but uh, actually it's been, a, uh, it's been a great journey at AccuWeather. I've uh, been here for uh, 25 years, which uh, is pretty shocking in uh, this day and age, especially with a data tech company, which is uh, partially what I consider ourselves to be. But uh, I've grown up with AccuWeather. Uh, my background is meteorology and technology. So in a lot of ways, I get paid to do a hobby. But I uh, have seen the company really evolve uh, from a, uh, what I'm going to say, very US-centric company to now a large global company um, that has over 150 million users every single month, essentially from every corner of the planet. You know, one of the, one of the lines that I've, I've said to you over the years that I've known you, Chris, if there's an internet connection, there's a good chance there's an AccuWeather user on the other end of that. Um, and that's really how the company has evolved at this point in terms of really creating products and services for the world. And then as technology has evolved and new ways to get involved with uh, you know, content display and the uses of different types of content on different technologies, uh, weather has and will always be an interesting component to that. And uh, in a lot of ways, that's also how, you know, uh, We've worked together uh, along the way in trying to solve some of those solutions as well. And I'm sure we'll get into that here as we go on. Absolutely, Will. And now I think about our audience would actually appreciate maybe a little bit of insight and uh, perhaps many of them don't know much about AccuWeather as a company, maybe don't know about the roots. Could you maybe quickly yeah. review maybe a little bit about the history of the company and where its roots are and its ties to Pennsylvania and the, uh, sure. and the education space? Because I think it's all interesting, but not necessarily something everybody knows. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think that they're, you know, I, I take for granted it has such a global brand presence. But to your point, we're actually 60 years old this year. So the company's been, uh, been headquartered in Pennsylvania now for uh, 60 years actually came out uh, to some extent as an incubator, although those words weren't talked about back then, out from Penn State University, which is one of the largest, and I will say as an alumni, best meteorology schools uh, in the world at this point, um, and started 60 years ago and really had a focus on trying to find its niche in how can we, how can weather forecasting and weather information help businesses succeed and whether that's create top line profitable opportunities for them, or actually the other way, protect bottom line through risk management and risk assessment. And in fact, that was the company's roots. Uh, you know, some of the first customers of the company were uh, actually uh, gas companies looking to predict uh, heating and cooling degree days so they could figure out how much gas load they had. Today, that's, you know, very commonplace. Uh, 60 years ago was not the case. Um, and the company evolved from there, really moved into looking for, for other businesses that it could impact, you know, and whether that was the transportation and logistics planning. And it ultimately moved into uh, a B2B to C conversation where uh, it started with radio, television, print newspaper relationships. In fact, AccuWeather, uh, first, first company to do the color page, for example, with USA Today and Gannett, who's still a partner of ours today at this point. So a long history of being on the forefront of kind of emerging emerging areas and, and service locations with, with all these different, um, you know, technology types and delivery types. And then really it was, uh, you know, when, when the internet really started to become ubiquitous, not just within the U.S., but all over the world, that AccuWeather went direct to consumer. And that's when the owned and operated digital products, the website, the apps, and things of that nature really started to be introduced to a much wider audience than the audience that, that certainly I grew up with when I was working, you know, when, when I was going through school and knew AccuWeather, the brand name, uh, growing up in Philadelphia at the time. And then now, you know, as I mentioned uh, in the open there, um, we have over 150 million users on a monthly basis from all corners of the world. We're building products now that have to be global first. They have to be localized in language, feel natural. Um, and a lot of places, too, we've evolved our mission statement to really focus on 
protecting lives and property, um, which also has become uh, a kind of a rallying cry for us. And clearly, you know, as climate change is forcing all of us to rethink some of our business decisions, um, yet another area where we're really looking to not just make our mark, but provide a service that improves people's lives uh, around the world. And again, that could be businesses, but it could just ultimately come down to the individual using the product. All right. That, that's a great description. I, I appreciate that. There were actually a few things in there uh, even I didn't know. Um, I think going uh, in riffing in something that you that you said, um, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, for AccuWeather, uh, it's been very much about following the technology to some degree. And that technology has opened up avenues that were previously unavailable, opportunities that didn't exist. I think you mentioned a couple uh, during the uh, during the introduction. Uh, we've worked on a couple together. Uh, but could you talk a little bit about how that impact has altered the company and how you're looking at technology and innovation in particular as a basis for future growth? And maybe give us a little bit of hint as to where you feel like that technology is headed in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 that's a great way to phrase that question, Chris. And obviously, it's got a long answer, right? Like, and uh, and so we can we can pull that apart and really look at the different components of this. Um, I'd say, you know, one of the things, one of the hallmarks of AccuWeather, we really have focused on what is the impact, the impact to you and I as individuals trying to plan our lives, impact to some of these businesses that we mentioned before, you know, how do I help a business improve their profit margin, protect their team, protect their assets, their employees? How do I create opportunities for revenue streams for them? But it's always been about differentiating. So in, in a space today, in a world today, where if you actually think about it and look around, weather is all around us, weather information that is. I would, I would contend that you know, in many homes, there are multiple places where weather is permanently displayed. It's on, the, it's on a TV screen that's powered by, by Android when you, turn, when you turn on a large screen in a house for video viewing. It's now in some cases on refrigerators. There are numerous devices in the house that are listening and answering. Um, and whether that's you know an Amazon Alexa product, whether it's a, a Google Home, whether it's Siri, um, all of these things now have weather available for information um, or they're just constantly displaying. And so what that means for us is we have to differentiate between that. It's not about is my current temperature better than your current temperature? It's tell me something useful. Um, and that drives in a lot of ways our product innovation. Like we start from that standpoint. What would be useful to me given the scenario that we just laid out? And that's where technology gets interesting because it creates these new opportunities, as I mentioned, to display content in a just-in-time environment that is useful to me. And I think if you're going to search out branded weather, and obviously I would like everybody listening to this to really consider that, you know, accurate weather, of course we want to be accurate. We're fanatical about it but we wanna be useful in the moment. And the technology innovation that happens allows us to do that. The other thing that I feel like is it's weather plus something else. It's that weather information combined with that other something. That other something could be a technology piece that puts something in our hands. You know, Go back at this point now, 15 years ago, as mobile phones became more ubiquitous out there, it was then about, you know, oh, I could check the weather. Now I think there's an expectation that no, when I need to know, it'll be pushed to me. And that, again, that's that's an evolution of the technology, but it's also an evolution of our thinking of the type of product that a user would want that, a, that, that would be valuable to them. And now it's much more about tell me something relevant and unique. And that's where the technology gets interesting. You know, you alluded to the work we've done together. And, you know, when, when I think of, for example, building a weather app in a in the cockpit of a of a vehicle in a car yeah. what's useful useful is not mirror the phone screen that i already have at my fingertips useful to me is starting to push the boundaries of there's a gps signal i know where i am i know where i'm going chances are with a with some type of wayfinder that i've programmed into weather conditions change based along that way and how do we create a product that's useful in that moment to a user that's in that cockpit either either driving or passenger that tells them information that they can use right then and there. And that is absolutely a driver of today, but it, it, it will be, it's part of our roots. It's who we are. It's how we got to where we are today in terms of really being able to 
again, push the envelope of what can, how can we take key pieces of data, but make them relevant and useful. And I feel like as technology continues to innovate, that's not going to stop. We, you and I both know that there will be new, new technologies, new ways of either doing business or new consumer ways that we interact with each other. Weather is going to be a part of that. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, Steve, it's, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, a, uh, you know, at least the current project that we're uh, working on. Um, in that particular case, the, uh, the, the, the auto use case, um, do you find that there are other factors that now start to weigh in on decisions you're making, both from a product standpoint and a technology standpoint that otherwise might not have? For example, as a, as, 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 as a, as a follow-up, would it, would safety of the driver be a concern that hasn't pri that hasn't previously touched on your product decisions or or the availability of your services is that now a conversation that uh, that you're having that you didn't have before um, maybe what's another that that you can think of no i think safety is a really good one to start with you know one of the things that i didn't hit on the it, at the beginning of this conversation is part of accuweather's mission statement the opening lines of the mission statement start with protect lives and property um, and so safety is very much a part of that. And again, I, I, I think that should be, in our view, that's a, that's a step one of that conversation of that type of application. Um, but you actually will see it in other parts of the product. You know, if you would move into and just you know, download the AccuWeather app and open the app up, the first thing that will show up at the top of the screen is any type of watch or warning or alert that's local to that exact area in that location. Um, because to us, that's one of the most important things we could communicate. Because at the end of the day, sometimes it's just an inconvenience. Other times, it's the difference between life and death. And in a lot of ways, awareness is the most important thing that we can bring to the table. You know, and so I think safety, you know, you gave that example. I think safety is a great one for the driver, you know, in terms of thinking about what are things, how does weather impact safety? Well, there was an incident that occurred in uh, March this year within Pennsylvania, a, a horrific uh, pile up, but there were casualties. Unfortunately, people lost their lives. And the main driver of it was a snow squall that covered a very thin portion of the highway that drivers did not know was there in the moment um, and did not have the time once they, once they moved into that weather condition. It was something that went from Visibility was absolutely acceptable in terms of driving conditions to, I can't see. And you have seconds before that happened. And then you have seconds to make a decision. And that's a case, again, where the technology exists. All the pieces we would need to solve that problem exist. Connectivity within the car, the ability to know where the, where the driver is in that case, the ability to know where the driver is going where the radar is that shows that, where the radar is moving. One of the products that, that we have been working on now for a better part of almost a decade is a is a minute by minute forecasting product for any address, any, any location, any latitude, longitude. Um, so we have the ability to predict where things are moving to. It's putting all those pieces together that at the end of the day, the ultimate payoff for that is somebody's life and saving somebody's life. And so, again, this is where just being able to consider the technology that's available to us and really think about how weather plus, weather plus, all those other pieces that I named, really come together to create something that is not just unique, not just innovative, but beyond useful. And in, and in some cases, could ultimately pay off with the ultimate um, use case of protecting somebody's property, protecting somebody's life. Saving life, of course. Now, I'm, I'm curious about uh, something, Steve, and the, the audience may be as well. Uh, when you talk about something like an in-auto app, uh, and you then consider the introduction uh, about AccuWeather and kind of like where things started, um, where does that impetus for growing or exploring the boundaries of your digital product set come from? Where does an idea like that get generated? Is it something that uh, a, a product team within your organization uh, comes off with and explores with a uh, with a potential partner? Is it something that's generated because of clear user need? Perhaps the partner uh, comes up with this idea. What's the path to building something like that? 
Yeah, you know, I mentioned, you know, we're 60 years old this year, and we're going to celebrate that in September um, when that anniversary comes around. But I'll also say this, I feel as if we are, we have a lot of traditional startup roots, meaning the answer to your question, the simple answer is yes, that this is not something that just gets relegated to a product organization or a, a think tank that their entire job is to think this through. We actively look for and, and cultivate ideas up and down the organization. You know, I didn't go through my entire background, but you know, if, if, you, if you go on LinkedIn and you go take a look at all the different things that I have done within the company here, you know, I've moved through operations, I've moved through IT, I've moved through some of our sales channels. Um, I'm not a unique story. There are a lot of individuals in this company here who have had those same opportunities. And it's part of the fact that we foster that and cultivate that. And then when, we, when it comes to innovation and ideas, we, we solicit from the team um, on a consistent basis, whether we're holding lunch and learns, whether we're asking for very specific topics, um, but we're trying to use the power of the individuals that are part of this company, who frankly, most of them have passion for this exact thing. You know, how do we create new innovative products that impact people's lives? And, and they find that, uh, you know, a company like AccuWeather gives them an outlet for that. It's, it's, it's a useful product that's a part of everyone's daily life. And uh, seeing that come to life is uh, both rewarding, but again, the ability to contribute is something that we ask for everywhere. And then also, you know, it, 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 look, I'm, I'm gonna give, I'll give you guys uh, some credit in this. You know, you have very similar traits in terms of what Tribal Scale does, in terms of that concept of, I wanna ideate with you, I wanna sit with you. And clearly when, there's, when it comes from with a partner together, magic can happen that way too. Um, and so, but I do think it's very much part of the fabric of who we are um, and how we operate. Um, and that's a little insight into, you know, some of the culture pieces of Acumen. Gotcha. No, that's, that's amazing. And uh, it's great to be working with a partner that shares similar um, culture views, uh, particularly in ways of, uh, of working. Um, here's another thing that, I've, um, that I'm somewhat curious about, having come from somewhat of a similar space, both of us are uh, have professionally worked in companies who depend on data. To your point, AccuWeather is a data tech company. You can uh, you can say uh, very easily. Uh, we both have experience in the in the data space. Um, and one of the things that I know, and I think you know, and in, uh, inherently about uh, the data space is having access to lots of data and presenting lots of data to cons uh, consumers results in a lot of data back. And some of that data is usable, some of it is not, but some of it is very interesting. Um, what are some things that have surprised you or maybe some uh, interesting tidbit about the data you've gathered on the way that your data, your applications, your services are used that our audience might find um, interesting? Yeah, well, I, look, there's a lot of use cases on that. Um, let me give you a couple examples of, uh, uh, I'll give you a data example and I'll give you a customer example. And both will come from different, different areas that you're probably going, hmm, I didn't realize that. We have had, Customers come to us, um, for example, film companies will come to us often. And the film company is trying to do, I'll, I'll use a simple example. They're in downtown Manhattan and they're looking to do a, uh, they need a rainy day because they're going to do a car chase for a movie. That makes sense. All of us understand that. We've also had customers come to us and say, hey, we are doing a movie in a very remote location in northern Mexico. And we have to move our crew up to this remote location. It takes about four or five hours to get there. And I need a nighttime rain scene. By the way, this ra it rains in this place during monsoon season, which said differently, you probably got 30 days a year to pick that day. And that's a case where a customer's coming to us going, I don't just need the forecast. I need you to help me make a decision by lunchtime, whether I'm dragging everybody up the top of this mountain later today. Um, and that's a decision support where we're, we're helping them. Obviously, it's at the end of the day, it's still the same base data, but we're now giving them a pathway of, of, of really trying to help a business decision for them. And for them, the most important piece of that is having the consultation with the meteorologist. They don't want to necessarily just look at the app. Um, conversely, I've had others come to us and say, you know, AccuWeather, you have millions of users on your app. Obviously, our, if, if you look at our app and you go through our app, you will realize Users are not logging in to get weather data. We're not collecting you know, email addresses and names and things like that. All we are doing is saying, hey, there's a user in Central Park that wanted forecast today. 
you know, right. hey, there's a user in downtown Philadelphia that wanted a forecast today. Well, we've had a hedge fund come to us and say, we're really looking to figure out how um, people are either moving in and out of airports. So I'd like to know how many people are requesting data from airports for you, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for the past two weeks. Could you just give me a count? I just want to know and tell me how many airports they are. Um, and that was a fascinating way of not interested necessarily in the forecast, more interested in the fact that they know users are looking for this data in these locations and would like to know to them, is there more users or less users to help them figure out from a travel standpoint what that means in terms of different types of stocks or whoever their customers are. Or frankly, I don't even know who their, who their end game customers are. But it was a really interesting request um, in terms of really thinking about never thought of it that way. You know, obviously all of us travel, weather is probably an important piece of when we do travel, um, but trying to correlate that to, you know, is it, is it an uplift or a decrease um, in terms of usage um, in these locations? Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, incredibly interesting. Um, one uh, maybe final question here or something to uh, wrap, uh, wrap things up with. As you look at the future and you consider emerging technologies or things that are now important to audiences and weren't important before, capabilities of network, bandwidth availability, whatever the case may be. Where do you see the biggest opportunity for AccuWeather and where do you see the greatest amount of innovation that can happen? Is there a game changer that's coming? Is there something that you believe will further enhance the need for this type of data or uh, provide new use cases? What gets you excited? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll answer maybe a little more uh, esoteric. So many things have changed in the past 10 years. So many things have changed in the past 20 years, for sure, in terms of technology. The one thing that we still haven't perfected yet is that perfect weather forecast. So even though so many other things have been really honed and perfected, and, and in some cases, we probably take for granted that these were, these were unsolved issues 20 years ago, um, I do believe that the weather, weather forecasting and this entire science will continue to just get better and better, meaning the accuracy will improve, how many days out the accuracy will improve, and the ability to continue to forecast these micro events, what happens on this street corner versus that street corner will also improve. And as that improvement happens, that impact to our lives the, the lack of disruption that gets created because of it, our ability to plan around it. We're not gonna be able to obviously stop the weather, but our, our ability to actually know what's going to happen and then plan around it, that's millions or billions of dollars in terms of increased productivity or decreased lost time or whatever we had to do in order to take advantage of that or not, or not be able to prepare for it in the moment, that's gonna change. And so I feel like we sit on the forefront of the ability to drive that innovation. The other thing I will also tell you is, you know, I mentioned the protect lives and property. And because we have a global audience that goes beyond just North America, it literally is to every country out there. And the one thing that's fascinating with weather is weather in a lot of ways has borders. Um, a lot of money is spent by a lot of governments. A lot of military money is spent to perfect the perfect forecast. The problem is that data is not gonna be openly available to every other location around the world. And so we, as a multinational, really look at the opportunity to go in there and say, what can we do to improve the accuracy of the forecast, obviously everywhere on the planet, but then potentially provide solutions that will improve people's lives, no matter where you are in the world. And in some cases, um, provide life-saving information to locations today that frankly do not have any awareness or any capability there. But we do know as mobile technology continues to become more ubiquitous and access, which is the big key for it, it's not the tech, it's not, it's not the handset itself, it's just, do we have enough data pipes out there? That is getting solved as we, as we talk right now. And so I think there will be a, a huge opportunity for AccuWeather as this multinational company to work with other multinational companies to figure out that perfect forecast to then ultimately deliver solutions that we should be able to help planning future economies and frankly, save people's lives in locations today um, that just do not have that capability. 
Um, and I think we will be one of those that will be standing there. And, you know, I'm excited about the, the science and the technology and our capabilities. Um, but again, we're not going to do this ourselves. It's going to take some partners, um, some forward thinking partners to get there. But that that opportunity exists um, and is a driver for me and this company every day. That's uh, that's, that's that's great. And I, I have to say, it's been um, incredibly illuminating talking to you and uh, interesting. Um, I also appreciate uh, the uh, the work that we've done together on the innovations that we've been able to be part of. Uh, it's been a tremendous opportunity for us to uh, to work with you. Um, I think it's fair to say that you, um, as AccuWeather, um, you guys have um, content and data that in one way or another is important to everybody for a number of reasons. And uh, continuing to explore uh, the opportunities and innovations that can be created from the availability of that data is, uh, is going to be at the core of uh, both your future um, strategy as well uh, as well as ours so thank you once again uh steve for taking the time to uh to, to speak with us here and being part of first name basis i encourage everybody who's listening to if you haven't already if you're not one of the millions hundreds of millions of users already utilizing accuweather information to uh pick up the uh your, the, your phone uh dial it in on your refrigerator check it out through alexa uh whatever your method is um and check it out uh, there's some really innovative products and for those of you who haven't, you may at some point see it anyway in a uh, product that you own that previously wanted connected. Um, with that said, Steve, anything you'd like to close with or uh, anything else you'd like to give us, uh, you know, un uh, unprompted? Yeah, you know, look, uh, first off, thank you for having me on this, Chris. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about some of the exciting things that uh, we're doing together, but also uh, what AccuWeather's thinking about and how we think about approaching this market. You know, I think I'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about um, climate change and really what that means. And I think, again, going back to the last statement there of, you know, a vision for a better forecast and more perfect forecast. Again, we're not going to stop at this point some of the changes that are going to happen, although I am hopeful that as a global community, we come together and recognize that we do need to make some adjustments to what we are doing. But that said, it's the ability to plan for that and the ability to be conscious of it and think about it, that there is this, there is the ability as the technology and the forecasting sciences get better to really start to think about putting ourselves as human beings in better positions, better positions to thrive, to survive. Um, and I think, you know, again, the products and services that'll be needed to guide that, um, AccuWeather will certainly be there to help that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it comes down to us as people and solving solutions and providing solutions and solving problems for all of us, to, uh, ultimately, to make for a better world, regardless of what, what the weather is in that world. Um, but we have the ability to plan for it. And we have the ability to make better decisions for it. And so that will certainly be a topic that we will continue to explore. We're exploring it today. We have some really interesting ideas that we'll be announcing soon around that front. But again, it's going to take us plus some partners uh, to get there. Um, but it's definitely going to be part of our mission going forward. I appreciate that, Steve. And I think it's really rewarding to be able to work both within the constraints of a business and also be thinking about big pictures and things that affect all of us and impact us beyond the daily activities of a company or of a technology, um, particularly those that um, impact the world and, and everybody here. Once again, thank you for joining us on First Name Basis. Uh, for the audience, thank you for participating. You can check out this podcast and more episodes of it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Google, YouTube and others. Uh, please uh, let us know if you'd like to hear about a specific topic or hear from somebody else in the industry that, uh, that might be interesting for you or touch on anything that uh, we haven't in the past. Uh, thank you once again. And with that, we uh, end this uh, episode. Thank you. Thank you.